What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here, along with Sean P. Walsh, F. Andrew Parr. We got Stover in the house, Corey, Sophie, Steven. Uh, this is a very unique experience for all of us as we're still figuring out what the hell we're doing right now. But we are simulcasting with the video cast uh, via StreamYard and the things that uh, Best Serve does here, and then also on Clubhouse. And basically, we're having a, a team powwow, getting the Cali Barbecue Media the digital hospitality team together with the uh, best serve team to kind of talk about our trajectories on, on creating these media brands within food, beverage, and hospitality. And, and we're going to, we're going to start with probably people realizing that, uh, you know, we're, we're figuring out the robots as we go. Everybody is in this new digital landscape and we're all trying to understand how we communicate as pure communicators. And so we're excited to kind of be, uh, omnipresent today and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, you know what it takes to produce the content that we produce some of the struggles that we have how we're looking to grow this thing what it means to be a media brand within food beverage and hospitality something that sean and i and everyone here really believes that every restaurant every food brand every cpg brand anybody needs to be their own media brand the gatekeepers are changing we need to make sure that we all own our own story and we are not beholden to anybody to be able to tell our story. And I think that's what we're really focused on. And just a couple of housekeeping items. We are recording. So everybody's aware of that. We're going to be getting this onto the Besser podcast site. What are we going to do? Friday, probably Friday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern for our West Coasters, 11 a.m. Pacific. This will be up on, uh, you can find us on Anchor or wherever you get podcast, Besser podcast. Sean, you guys putting it up as well? Absolutely. We will be repurposing this content um, as always, and we'll, we'll talk about our process as well, for sure. This repurposing content is going to come up again and again and again. We're very much looking to kind of have these pillar pieces of content, be it videocast or clubhouse, and then be able to disseminate that in all the different ways that we communicate uh, on the digital landscape, as well as just as, as food, beverage, hospitality professionals. So Sean, do you want to, uh, set the tone a little bit for kind of what it means to, to be a media company in the 21st century and food beverage during post pandemic, all of that kind of stuff, set the table for us a little bit. Sure. Thanks Jensen. I appreciate the uh, opportunity and all the people that are tuning in on clubhouse and that are going to hear this on podcast or possibly Instagram or possibly TikTok. I mean, ultimately the answer to the question of how do you become a media company, I think is easy. It's you decide to become a media company. So it starts with a mindset. Um, it's kind of the same way we decided to become a barbecue company. We were doing barbecue, but we realized that barbecue was a point of differentiation for our restaurant and our sports bar. And we leaned into our craft. Um, because we are in a difficult location in San Diego, we didn't have people coming into our restaurant. So we started leaning into digital marketing and social media marketing because we built our business basically when the smartphone, the iPhone came out. Um, so the iPhone came out in 2007 and 2008 we opened. Uh, we struggled for three years trying to get people to care about what we were doing. And we learned that we could start to share our story online on Facebook, on Instagram once it came around, on Twitter, on Google, on our website. Uh, we started to learn these skills that now allow us to literally produce pillar content like you were talking about and produce that consistently so that we actually are no longer just sharing our story, who we are as a brand, who we are as a restaurant, but we're sharing the story of our village. We're sharing the story of our vendors. We're sharing the story of our community. We're sharing the story of our industry. Um, and we're teaching other people all over the world that tune into our podcast that find our content, however they find it, um, that they can do it too. Um, it's never been more exciting to be in the media space um, because everyone has exactly why you're listening. If you're on Clubhouse, you're using a smartphone to listen on Clubhouse. Chances are, if you're listening on a podcast, you're probably using your smartphone to listen to the podcast. Um, we have this incredible tool in our pocket um, that connects us all over the globe. I mean, I spent a month in Bulgaria. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have the internet, if I didn't have my smartphone. Um, so I'm excited to break down kind of the, the tactics and how our team is built and how we, how we got built, but I'm even more excited to learn about your team and how you guys 
um, came together because it's we're kind of like this uh, this this group of bandits, these wild bandits that came, these creatives from all different parts. I mean, Stover's in Portland, Oregon. Steven's actually here at Cali. Ian, who couldn't join us, he's in Austin, Texas. Um, so we got people all over that are putting this content together, and uh, it's kind of this the magic media sausage that we like to say. So um, yeah, I'm fired up. Thanks for thank. I'll pass it on to Stover. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that intro, Sean. I, I love talking about uh, the mighty media sausage that we make all the time and bringing people into the sausage factor and showing them how we do what we do. Um, and, and I echo what you said. I'm very excited to see what another media team does and, the, and then how they approach content, how they approach scheduling and all the stuff that we know is important uh, to becoming a media company. Uh, my name is Stover. I work with Cali BBQ Media. I'm a uh, digital hospitality specialist is what we call ourselves. I produce the uh, podcasts uh, and media and other stuff um, relating to digital content for the company. Um, it was a restaurant that became a media company, and that was not the easiest thing to do, actually, because when we told people that we wanted to become a media company to become Cali BBQ Media, not just Cali BBQ, they laughed because they didn't understand what we were talking about, and they still don't. But I know everyone here in the room and everyone listening on Clubhouse and on the podcast knows what we're talking about. It's very important for all businesses to become a media company. But the secret is, how do you do that? Where do you even start? And what does it mean to be a media company? So we approach it, uh, number one, thinking about what is our piece of pillar content right now? What is the most important thing that we want to get out there to tell people about and, and, to, and to show them? For us, it's our, it's our podcast. Our podcast lets us put out something every week break it up into other pieces of media and then release those online. Uh, they're therefore being everywhere at once. Um, you know, we're adding another show and we have all sorts of other things, but the, the one piece of advice I want to give people to start here is if you're looking to be a media company, think about what the most important thing you want to publish is and put it on a schedule. Number one, I mean, you have to have a schedule. So we'll start there. Um, uh, and I'll pass it on to whoever wants to jump in next and then we'll give some more tips as we go. Yeah, I think I just want to go quick and, and have my team introduce themselves so we kind of know who we're going to be hearing from. And then uh, and then we can dig into some of these pieces. Uh, let's start start with Andrew can uh, introduce himself quick. Hey, everyone. Andrew Parr here. I am internally known as the Herald of How, Chief How Officer. And, um, you know, to Stover's point, if for me, if it's not on a calendar, it does not exist, literally. So it's got to be there. Um, and I just, I kind of look at things from two different points of view, either what's next and how do we get there? Or if we know where we're going and when we need to be there, then how do we work backwards to make sure that everything's in place? That is, <laughs> the, you make that sound so easy. Incredibly difficult, the work that Andrew does. Uh, to be able to put all of the crazy ideas that we have, the wild ideas that we have, that uh, nobody thinks are possible and nothing is possible until you prove that it's possible and uh, and make it seem very simple. So thanks for that. Uh, Sophie Breaker can jump in and, and introduce themselves too. Hi, sorry. Definitely tried to unmute myself on the StreamYard. Um... I'm Sophie Breaker. I am, uh, my superhero title is the Best Served Together Trailblazer. I'm the director of the More Voices Initiative. Um, and yes, I had to read that off the website. Um, so I am in charge of all scheduling. I organize the organizers. I'm in charge of um, kitten herding a lot of the guests, doing a lot of the um, back and forth between the client stuff and I was in charge of website management and um, our blog up until we grew too big for just me to be in charge of the blog. So um, yeah, nice to meet all you. Kit kitten herding, that is that is something that in the restaurant industry we know all too well. Yeah, the, the ability to keep the lines of communication open and clear and flowing is the most difficult part of this entire process of being a media company. Number one, two, and three is the ability to manage that communication within the team itself externally. So the, the processes that uh, Sophie, especially Andrew build are, are 
instrumental. It's the only way that you can scale because what we're actually doing is we're creating a system and the media lays over the top of that system. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Corey Nelson, AKA rock Corey, you want to jump in and tell us about yourself quick. Hey, uh, Corey here. Uh, my, my sweet name is storyteller Supreme, uh, which is basically watch, listen, content producer. Um, I started basically as an intern putting the podcast up when we were just a podcast, putting it up on the, on the interwebs and then kind of evolved into, you know, making, making videos and trying to tell the stories we wanted to tell. Um, I'd say right about now I'm focused on trying to take what Jensen says and cut it down into, uh, you know, a edible piece of content that can be spread out on all the different platforms um, and just to help uh, get our message across on uh, Twitter, Instagram, you know, Facebook, everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's that's really my little gig there. Yeah, and it's super cool. Actually, Corey and Sophie started as interns and like super quick backstory. Best Served Podcast started November 18th, 2019 as just like, I'm going to be on my phone and there's some videos of me like in my, in my car outside the gym with hoodies hanging around me just on my phone with like a call center headset being like, I'm talking to my homies about what the hell's going on with, with being a chef and being in a restaurant and all these type of things. And then on March 18th, 2020, when restaurants all got shut down, I said, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, the consulting work that I do pretty regularly, like all went to zero in like a four day span, every project over like a nine month span said, we're pulling the plug. We're not doing it. We're shutting the doors, whatever that was. And so I was like, I don't know what else to do. I'm just going to hustle and communicate. I went live on March 18th and did, did not, not stop. stop we were on we were seven on days a week. week. Robots. We were on seven days a week for almost six months. I was like, I'm just going to show up for people and be here to talk about whatever needs to be talked about within hospitality uh, industry and just started finding people. Andrew and I, Andrew was a guest on the show and somebody I've known for years. We just reconnect and said, hey, let's talk about stuff and see what happens. Sophie was an intern from Johnson & Wales. I was like, I don't know. We're doing this podcast thing if you're interested. Corey was at the Colorado Media School. I don't know. Let's make some videos or something. And it just started there, you know, and now last we look, there's 17 people that are all part of the best served team. And this core four is really what has helped build that and create the infrastructure for that. But that's what it takes is just the willingness to put stories out there. And you should see some of the early lives. They were, they were horrible. I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't. I had no idea what I was doing. I just said, I'm going to have conversations with people. The internet would go out all the time. We were on like different streaming services. I have to reset in the middle of them. Like they were horrible. And, and we didn't erase a single one of them because they are part of our history. And we want to remember where we came from and to see now that we're today, we recorded episode 333 straight up of the video cast. And so now we've had over 400 guests on through a pandemic. That fucking matters. Like that makes a difference in our lives. It makes a difference in the lives of the people that we get to communicate with. It brings people into our orbit that we get to meet new people and more people, you know, and that's super important foundational. So that's what this team is able to do. And the fact that they give me the opportunity to blabber on as much as I do, I'm truly grateful to it. So I want to kick it back and, and meet some of the rest of your team, Sean. Yeah, let's, uh, let's toss it to Ian. Ian uh, Stonebrook. How's it going? I'm Ian Stonebrook. As you can tell, I'm tech support for Cali Barbecue Media. Um, it took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to be on Streamable and Clubhouse at the same time. So thanks to uh, Stover and Sean for helping with that. And actually, at first I was kind of like, I don't know if I need to be on Streamable, but I like being able to see the reactions of somebody laughing because you totally miss that on Clubhouse and it's really... Uh, a very difficult platform to tell jokes on. Um, but yeah, so uh, I work as a writer. Um, I'll tell you, Sean and Stover came in at a time when I'd basically just uh, been let go or told I couldn't be afforded from my job of 10 years. Um, I always joke. Uh, I didn't know how to spell restaurant despite being a writer. I still don't. I probably mess it up every time. But um, 
being able to have the chance to work with them and tell stories that I'm coming into blind. You know, it's it's not an industry I work in. Um, I mean, I work I've worked as a writer, as a storyteller for years, but when it comes to food, tech, business, even social media, I'm truly pretty green to it, despite um, using or digesting all of it. But um, yeah, it's been great. I uh, I love telling stories with these guys. Um, some some of y'all, I've uh, I've heard your voices before if I haven't seen your faces, so it's good to uh, put that together. But uh, I'll, I'll toss it back to to Sean and Stover, the the pros on mine, and see what they got to say. Thank, thanks, Ian. Uh, Steven, you want to introduce yourself? Hi right, guys, I'm Steven Swigurski. I'm the catering events manager and location manager for our Barrio Food Hub Ghost Kitchen for Cali Barbecue. Um, I like to call myself a jack of all trades or a workhorse. I'm a, also a utility man, wherever a position needs to be filled, whether it's in the kitchen, washing dishes, cleaning a smoker, I'm there. I like getting my hands dirty. I like learning anything in the restaurant. This is my, actually my first restaurant job ever. I came from working with kids and doing recreation sports with the county down in San Diego for eight years. Now I'm on six years with Cali Barbecue and I'm wanting to stay. I want to keep going until I am forced to retire. So, yeah. So I'm going to share, uh, Steven actually took the best serve podcast challenge, the 86, 86, 86, which I'll let Jensen explained, but one of the things that I love talking about, whether I'm on Clubhouse, whether I'm on podcasts, whether I'm talking to a webinar, you know, talking to U.S. Foods restaurant owners, is it's it's the new hospitality career, and the new hospitality career embraces digital storytelling. And what I love about Stephen is that he's willing to be uncomfortable and willing to use a smartphone to take photos, even though he's not confident in those photos, he's made them better. He's learning how to post on Instagram stories. He's willing to participate in Clubhouse. And it's really, you know, so much of what we do as a media company is learning. I mean, it's learning and being willing to fail. Um, you know, like, like Jensen said in the beginning is when he first started, it, they're, they're terrible. I mean, I just interviewed a incredible podcast guest and he was telling me about his first YouTube video seven years ago. And he's like, it's laughable to go back and look at it, but you've got to start somewhere. You know, your first TikTok video, you got to start somewhere. You got to go in selfie mode. You just have to get over those hurdles and realize it's a craft. It's actually better if you only get one view. It's actually better if you only get one listen, at least for me, because I take it as a badge of pride. Well, maybe I can get two the next time. Maybe I can get three the next time. But ultimately, I really don't care how many I get because I know that after a, a, thir a three TikTok 33 challenge, which we're all doing, I know that at the end of those 33 days, at the end of that 100 pieces of content, I'm going to look and go, well, look at that. Barbecue sauce is really hot on the Internet. People don't really care about when I'm talking about podcasts, but barbecue sauce, we need to start going to talking a lot more about barbecue sauce because Chef Stover's shaking his head because that's what the results are telling us. That's what the analytics are telling us. And anybody that's been doing online marketing, online media, they will tell you, don't ignore the analytics, don't ignore the data. So thanks. I'm going to toss it to you, Jensen. Yeah, the willingness is, is the key. It's all mindset. Like if you believe that you have something worth sharing, then you do. And it's something that we've built as a foundation to best served is we are creating the infrastructure that more voices get to get added to the culinary narrative because it is so expansive. It is so diverse and it is so much more dynamic than the narrow focus that we've given it over the last 20, 25 years. And what we're seeing now is part of what will be the resurgence and become the future of this industry is storytelling. It's the only thing that matters, right? We talk about a lot, stop selling food, start telling stories. Food is just the proof that you are who you say you are. And my team's laughing. I love that I can see their reaction because they're like, he just never shuts up about it. And you're right, I don't and I won't and I never will because somebody needs to keep talking about that. And people don't believe me when I tell them that their story is worthwhile, that we are willing to put time and effort and build a whole system, a whole team of people who are here to bring your story to life, that's what we're here to do, right? We exist to amplify the worth and work of those who feed their community. And the work part is challenging, right? Making that barbecue sauce is challenging. The worth side, believing that anybody's gonna give a shit about what you have to say or offer, that's the hard part. So when you mentioned the 86, 86, 86 challenge, 86 articles in 86 days, 
paying an author $86 for their words. And when I say author, I mean people who have never written anything more than a 40 character Facebook post, right? And the fact that Steven wrote an article, was able to speak his truth to paper is meaningful. And right now we have a team of five editors that are going through and, and bringing these stories to life. And we've created a medium now in which $86 for an article is actually more than some professional writers get paid for pieces because we want to start to invest in what actually matters. And it is, and will always be the people that make up this industry, 11 million plus people and, and millions that have come before and millions that will come after. And so the fact that Steven and so many others will have an opportunity to share their story, even though they don't always know what their story is, we are creating the space for that. And usually what people don't believe for me is that I actually want them to tell their story. It seems like bullshit. Like, why would you want me? I'm, I'm nobody. It's like, you're exactly the right person to tell your story because nobody else can. So that's the focus point of all this. If you want to become your own personal brand, your own media brand as, as, a, as a restaurant, you have to decide that why not you? And you'll go through imposter syndrome. Sean and I have talked about this. Like, who the hell am I to go out here and speak on behalf of anybody else? Or why would anybody listen to my stuff? It's because it's coming from within you. You're allowing your story to come out. And no longer do you need a magazine or a newspaper or a radio show or a TV show to be able to tell your story. Sean talks about that phone all the time, that phone in your pocket, that's the only gatekeeper left. And then you just have to connect with your audience and, and figure out who they are. So uh, yeah, so those are kind of some of the high level things. I do wanna bring some really practical value because this all sounds good, but I wanna make sure like, how do we actually produce all these things? I'd love to go back to what Stover and then so Sophie mentioned. It's like scheduling. I'm super fascinated with scheduling. It's all about managing that calendar and our ability to be able to get everybody scheduled properly, to know when we're putting out the content. So we have you know, what, what we call these content campaigns where in a four month, span, or four week, a four week, excuse me, span, we'll put out 422 pieces of content across all the channels from articles, TikToks, video casts, clubhouse, audio podcasts, uh, memes, any way that people are communicating within the industry. We're going to cut all that up, figure out who the collaborators are, who the contributors are, what the topics are, what the threads that we want to pull on. And then it's a massive game, shell game of moving around when we're going to put those things out, who's going to be a part of each of those. So I wanted to maybe, I don't know, Sophie, for you, you know, looking at that calendar, you are mastering that calendar. What are the things that you're focused on? What are the things that you struggle with? Because we struggled with calendar management has, has been a big piece that we've worked to figure out. Give us some insights into kind of your day when you're looking at Google calendars and, and trying to manage all that. Um, so originally we were on Calendly for six months. Um, which really worked and it was really wonderful because you could see, you could like click open and you could see everybody who was on there and they had all of their information in one place and that was wonderful, except nobody did it. Um, and nobody would <laughs> fill out the things and then your guests would be like, what? You want me to fill out what? And it would be really depressing. Um, just to Google Calendar, which is honestly what so many people use and it's so much more accessible because so many people have Google Calendars and Google Gmails, um, and a lot of, for our content campaigns, we started off um, for Mental Health Month in May, um, and it was just like, let's do some mental health content, let's put this together, and then we got some friends, um, some Hasel Avilas from uh, Not 9 to 5 helped us, and we ended up having a giant summit with, I think, nine or ten organizations and people and we had a giant conversation about what we want to talk about and we put out um, focused content each week on different types of mental health awareness um, all sorts of stuff from uh, screaming the walk-in to um, self-care and it was really organic and there was absolutely no organization except for what I had created and so what we're doing now is um, we kind of did the same thing with Pride Month where it was ended up only being two weeks because people weren't as interested in it. And now 
were like really like Andrew's got a spreadsheet doing algebra on it and like he's got things planned out we've got a graphic designer now and so what ended up being like Jensen and I kind of like figuring out mental health month with Corey and Andrew not having a clue what we were doing and then realizing that we were doing something really big halfway through the month like now everybody's involved and we have like legit graphics and legit stuff and it's it's kind of terrifying because we went from like absolutely nothing and now everything's structured and organized and so yeah that's that's my schedule. I, I have a question for you Sophie do you do you guys schedule out the social posts and some of the smaller pieces of content or do you just schedule out the bigger pillar contents like the podcast and such um unfortunately we've been scheduling everything um so it used to just be the um, podcasts and now with StreamYard we've been recording before and then you have to record and then it like comes out a different day which is cool but that totally switched everything around um, and yeah I think Corey can talk a little bit more about the posting because I'm not so much on the posting side and he used to just put stuff out and I don't know Corey what do you want to talk about it's a uh, it's a I would say it's like a mix of both. Um, I know with these content campaigns going forward, we have everything scheduled for a day, but we're not so far as to say that we have, uh, I know that there's uh, certain web applications that you can use to schedule like the actual Instagram post or the the tweet or uh, something like that. Or I, I don't know if you can do it for TikTok, but anyway, a lot of that stuff, posting on Instagram, TikTok, um is all manually done there's there's certain days that we have scheduled to do it but um we haven't got to that level slash we're probably going to have to get to that level depending on how much stuff um we have where it's going to be too much for one person or two people to manually post on instagram um but but as for what we've been doing and like dealing with it hasn't been too much uh load for me to you know be like okay i got to post the, all the TikToks today or whatever, or uh, the audiograms are going to go out to this day to tomorrow. Like that is pretty easy, but I'm sure there's definitely, there's definitely things I've seen where you can do everything. You can automate it all, but um, that's above me. Hey, Corey, I have a question. So obviously Jensen came to you with this three TikTok 33 challenge and it's he's smiling because he's just like me where i come to stover and go oh yeah hey by the way we're going to produce 100 pieces of content in 33 days and by the way you're going to post on cali barbecue's tiktok channel and i'm going to post on sean p walchuff's tiktok channel can you tell me about the conversation that jensen had with you about tiktok and and the process that you guys are now doing to accomplish said goal of producing three TikTok videos every single day on the best serve channel, as well as, you know, just the creative process behind this or that. I mean, I love what you guys are doing. Anybody that's listening to this, if you're not following at best serve podcast and at chef Jensen coming on TikTok, please do that. Please also let us know that you heard it. We will follow you back. Cali barbecue will follow you back. Sean P. Walchef will follow you back. Uh, TikTok is a very exciting place for short form video storytelling, but I'd love to get a inside how the sausage is made at, uh, when Jensen comes to you with this ridiculous challenge. Yeah. So he basically just said that, you know, we're going to do three TikToks a day for 33 days. And I was like, well, that's cool. How are you going to pull it off? And he's like, well, you're going to pull it off. And I was like, okay. Uh, and I've been basically focused on TikTok for, I don't know, probably the last two months. I've been spending a lot of time learning it and figuring it out and trying to figure out the algorithms and stuff. So it's kind of a thing we did on the side. We would always talk about TikToks and share stuff. And then he kind of said, you're just going to do it. Um, the idea kind of comes from, you know, we, we thought it'd be harder if he just had to go on his phone and, you know, say some stuff and then him try to figure out how to put on text and music. Uh, he doesn't know how to do that very well. So that all falls over to me. Um, but if you ever noticed, if you follow Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, he does a lot of content. He takes all of his stuff, breaks it down into smaller stuff. But he's he did a he does a game called Overrated Underrated. Uh, Jensen and I 
both have seen a bunch of those episodes and he said, I want to do something like that for what we're doing. What other types of games can we do? And we had been talking about, uh, I think it was like a couple months ago, we had been talking about doing this already and we just never got around to it. This was kind of the perfect idea for it. But, you know, what else could we do? We have overrated, underrated of different foods. Um, it's interesting for me because I'm not like a chef or in the restaurant industry. So I try to come with a whole different take on it and see what his take is, you know? Uh, and then we just kind of went from there, you know, yay or nay on crazy foods, this or that for the food battles. Um, I think we did Kansas city and Memphis barbecue and we have one coming out. That's Texas versus Carolina. Um, just doing stuff like that and kind of having fun with it. Um, as for how it gets made, we have one day a week, we schedule for an hour and I come with, hopefully enough stuff to make 18 to 21 TikToks out of. And we just go rapid fire. And, you know, we start off kind of fun, having some fun. I give them some like hard hitting headlines in the news, you know, to get some serious seriousness stuff in there. And we just go after it for an hour. Um, and it's actually really fun to do it like that because um, it's just, just us kind of vibing and, you know, having, having fun and, and telling jokes and I'm in the background kind of laughing and, wondering why is he saying this or this is going to be great for TikTok and always feel good about it. So yeah, that's kind of the idea, just getting together. We actually do it on StreamYards. He sets up his phone and I yell over StreamYards, this or that or whatever. And you can kind of hear me muffled and I go back and post and amplify my voice so it sounds better. It's like I'm almost in the room, but really it's all, it's all through uh, uh, the webcam and everything like that. Stover, I'd love for you to chime in and just talk about, because Stover um, has done incredible work prior to joining Cali Barbecue Media on social, Instagram specifically for the Best Barbecue Show, which he launched in Austin, Texas. Um, that's how we originally met. But um, because of the amount of work that I'm having him doing, he hasn't been doing as much social until this TikTok challenge, and he's taken over the Cali Barbecue account, and um, I'll let him describe what what he's been doing with it and um, kind of the results. Yeah, I mean, I've always seen social media as a, rather than a bunch of rules, um, I just follow the flow of it. We, we like to talk about something from our podcast that a guest said, uh, be like bamboo, which means sturdy but flexible. So yes, we know that now that we're gonna be posting three TikToks a day. I know I want it to be focused on the theme of the restaurant, Sean and all the personalities and all that. So we have an overarching storyline essentially for the social media presence. But what I can't do, and it doesn't seem to work for me, is write out every tweet in advance, plan it out for a week, and then do and then do it. The reason is because I'm reactive on social media. I'm seeing what the trends are. I'm seeing what people are talking about. And if Sean posts an amazing video that he found or or filmed himself, and I see a 10 second clip in there that I want to repurpose. That might have to immediately go on and then I have to push something else that I scheduled. So um, we talk about planning and scheduling, how it's very important, which is absolutely true with the caveat that social media sometimes has to be improvisational. It's a mix of a science and an art form. The science comes from the analytics and paying attention to what works. Sean mentioned we started to post some barbecue sauce content. So we uh, made a few more and posted them and did some A-B testing to see what worked. And, you know, it works exceptionally well, but we wouldn't know that if we weren't testing. So if we were very rigid and we weren't flexible like bamboo is, we wouldn't get anything done. But if we were too flexible, we'd never post. So it, it is a balance and it is much more difficult than it sounds. Um, like, like Jensen says, is that sure, it's, it's great to say be a media company and post to TikTok three times a day, post to YouTube once a day, post to this, this, this. But what we're always trying to figure out is how do we actually break it down and make that happen. So it is a mix of planning and improvisation. Um, but we, we, you guys were just talking about your process at Best Served, um, getting together and doing an hour long shoot to get 20 pieces of content is a very smart idea because it wouldn't happen if you were trying to do them one at a time. I mean, think about all the, all the distractions that is to sit down 20 different times throughout the week, even if it's for a minute, is very hard to do when you've got so much else going on. So if, if you want to be a media company, you want to start publishing, get together with someone you can collaborate with, spend an hour on video and audio, record it, of course, and 
and see what kind of stuff you can come up with. Just talk to the camera as if it's your audience. I mean, I bet you could at least get 10, 10 YouTube video. I mean, 10 Instagram, 10 YouTube, 10 TikTok, whatever from an hour long conversation. So it doesn't have to be difficult. It, 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 it's actually easier than it seems, which makes it more difficult. Does that make sense? <laughs> because there are no set rules of posting on this. So TikTok's a new platform and we're all figuring out. But what we all know, especially after this challenge, is that posting every day is important because it, it makes it a habit. I, you know, I'm good at social media, but I, I actually dislike the act of it. I dislike posting, opening it up and all that stuff because it distracts me from certain other things that I like doing, such as writing, editing, learning about video editing and stuff like that. But after doing it for two weeks now, Sean asked me to do the challenge. Well, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. It's not a challenge anymore. So yes, I'm posting three times a day, but it's not stopping. So I think Sean knew that when he asked me to jump on board and start doing it because, uh, you know, the habit is a positive habit is really important to build when you're working. So yes, Sean, this uh, TikTok challenge is not a challenge anymore. It's just part of my job. <laughs> Uh, now, now we have to up the challenge for uh, Stover and Corey here, Sean. I, I, I hear you too loud and clear. I love the bamboo one. I saw my team writing down that note. We're all about time stamping and grabbing great catchphrases and, and quotables. Uh, I like the Bruce Lee, be like water, right? You don't need to have a style. You need to be able to be fluid. And, and I definitely believe in that. And so it's interesting because when you were asking the question about scheduling, we are very big in planning and process and I'm horrible at scripting. And I'll break that down a little bit more because it plays into multiple things that we're talking about. We plan out everything. We have asset assignments. We know where 422 assets are going. We know what day that the published piece of promo material needs to be produced for us to then have a round of edits to then be able to publish it on this day, to then know the day exactly when that is going to be recorded, when it's going to be published. We know all of those things. We know that Friday at at 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., so that those pieces are going to come out. And so we very much know that plan. Yet the script changes all the time based on the nuance of what's happening in the moment. And so we're always ready to kind of ebb and flow like water. Uh, you know, I talk about people when they plan, especially in restaurants, you're either a, a gunslinger or a bean counter. You're either like, fuck it, I've done this before. Let me get in there and just shoot till everything's dead and figure out the rest later. Or I'm a bean counter. I set a plan. I can never deviate from that plan and I can't see the forest of the trees. And neither of those is a good long-term approach. And so being like a, a coach is interesting. You study film, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you set that game plan, and then you do your halftime adjustments. So Stover, that's kind of what I hear from that. We definitely approach it with that mentality. And the not scripting is interesting because – because I have so much to say, so much. And <laughs> I never stop talking about the things that I believe in. That's my job as the chief why guy over here. Like why, why, why is my North Star? Yet I also just am so all about freestyling. I love going off the cuff. I love just being put in the moment and responding in the moment to what I believe in because I believe in it so truly that it just comes out of me. So the fact that Corey was like, hey, make this video or that video, I was like, why don't we, why don't you just ask me whatever you want to ask me, anything. And they're all blind. I have no idea what Corey's going to ask me. And there's only editing to fit in the time. Nothing that I say ever is like, Corey, if I say something ridiculous, post it, please. Like it is what it is. Cause it's true. And, and so that's like what we focus on in that. There's one interesting thing I want to, I want to come back to, cause I think it's super important. The algebra that Sophie mentioned, Andrew is, ops guru like anytime we have anything operational especially with like the client side when we're working with restaurant clients or anything financial uh his ability to move around boxes to create seamless solutions is uncanny and so when we started talking about these content campaigns it's like hey, Andrew, we're gonna do 422 pieces like where the hell did that number come from where everything else comes from a deep dark place in the recesses of my brain and I said, we're going to have to figure out how to do this. So we have this asset assignment document that flows information all over. And Andrew is working on basically X plus or X minus. We've now got a date on the calendar for a content campaign, the first piece of publicly accessed content, and everything is an X plus or an X minus. What has to happen before that moment in time? What has to happen after that moment in time to deliver on uh, our promise 
to to bring these 422 pieces of content around a meaningful focused topic and theme with up to 16 different collaborating entities is is kind of what we're doing so andrew melt some people's face off with some drop some math knowledge on people how are how are we managing the ability to output at that scale with kind of understanding the x plus theory yeah it, it's um you know, it's interesting. It is, uh, it's a theory I came up with when I actually saw a post on Facebook from a, from a friend of mine who lives in North suburban Chicago. And she actually solves for X to figure out food cost, which I, I've never really used that methodology before, but it was, it was recent in my mind. And so when you and I started talking about this calendar, we, you know, and, and so we started with X being, uh, you know, we had to define X, right? So was X the first time we engaged with a potential client? Was X the first time a piece of content hit the public? Was X when we all started doing our work together? And, and so we came to the determination, like Jensen said, that X was going to be that the first piece of promotional material announcing the campaign hit the public. And like you said, any of our internal workings that occur before that date are X minus. And X minus is an actual date, right? So if we know that that piece of promo material was due for final edits seven days before it gets posted, so then determining what date that is becomes X minus seven. If we know that the first video cast is going to be uh, occurring seven days after the promotional piece goes out, then it's X plus seven. But the video cast is getting recorded seven days later, and then it's actually being published eight days later. So that's X plus eight. And we go through all of this from the first thing that we need to do to start this work all the way through the last piece of content being published 28 days later at the end of the content campaign. So basically you need a wizard on your team to be able to, to run this level of, of algebra, but this is what we do. What we recognize is like our content, it's, it's all right. It's pretty good. Corey makes me sound better and, and more entertaining and all that. But that is not actually the game that we're in. The content is just our expression of what we believe in. And what we believe in is the ability to amplify the worth and work of those who feed their community. And so our ability to put them on a pedestal again and again and again and again at scale is what we're actually meant to be doing. And so our ability to create all this infrastructure behind the scenes that nobody knows is happening. They just go, wow, I showed up to the show and it was great. And then all of a sudden links were shared to me. And I was tagged in stuff. And then my, my picture has, has sound waves on it. And I'm like being quoted and I sound super smart and there's hashtags on stuff. Like they don't need to know those things to be able to interact with us. What they recognize is that like that felt good. That felt right. That felt like I was able to get my story out in a way that I hadn't before. And then the, our next statements to them was like, you should do this for yourself. Like this is, this is the roadmap. We just laid out this, this map for you. You can, you can do this as well. You know, back to that 86 challenge, we have five editors working on this complex problem of Steven submits an article. And then we have to take all this information and put it in a multitude of places and make sure that Steven's headshot is in the right place and make sure Steven's bio is in the right place and make sure that, uh, you know, the sponsor of that article is, is tagged properly and make sure that uh, the article is edited properly and then at the end of it, right now, I'm doing it. And, and to Stover's point, as quickly as possible, I need to be, not be the one doing this. But like, it takes me, I post, I'll tell you very specifically, an article comes out at noon. An article came out an hour and 15 minutes ago. And as soon as we're done with this, I will go on, I'll post that to Best Serves Facebook, to the Best Serve Together uh, Facebook group that we host. I'll post it to the best serve creative LinkedIn page, my personal LinkedIn page. I'll post it to Twitter. I'll post it to a Reddit group. And we pick different groups based on what the, uh, what the topic of the article specifically is. And then I will make a, a screen grab 
and do stories and we have swipe up so I can link back to the article. There'll be a Facebook story and an Instagram story, eight places. It takes me less than five minutes to do that. I grab a quote, the most meaningful quote from the, from the article itself. I drop that in there. I copy and paste the call to action and tag the author, the, the sponsor in those posts. And that's it. Five minutes to be able to, to put out that article in eight different places where then people can consume that piece of content, interact with it, however, in whatever way that they see fit. But that ability to put that out in the, that many places, that's the game. That's the infrastructure that we're creating. So that's a, that's a big thing for me. One thing I wanted to make sure, and please, Sean, if there's other things you wanna make sure and, and, and get your team involved in the conversation. I am uh, fascinated two things that uh, that Cali Barbie Media Digital Hospitality does really well that we currently are not in that space to the degree that you are. You are transcribing. We're super interested in transcribing and getting more written content out there. And then the other was we're talking about the best way to share all the assets back with the contributors in a content campaign or with a guest so that they're the most likely to actually share it. And so we're, we're thinking through that. We're talking about, sorry, Slack channels for all people that are part of a content campaign. We're very active in Drive. Do we just drop all the assets in Drive? Do we have a document that has copy and paste copy to it? Like, how do we get them? And when I was a guest on your show, it was nice. You had a multitude of assets. And I go, like, oh, I grabbed this one. I grabbed this one. I grabbed this one. And put it out there. But uh, I definitely know a lot of people that are like, how do I share this? What do I do with this? And, and those are two things I'm very interested in. So uh, take that wherever, Sean, if it, if it fits in sure. now or at some point. Yeah, no, I think it, I mean, it's, it's a question that we're always asking ourselves because when you get down to becoming a media company, the most powerful form, so we talk about four forms and that's video, audio, written word, and images. And when you're using video, you're getting audio you're getting written word if you transcribe it, and you can get a static image. So you're literally covering everything with video. That's why video is so powerful. So native video is where you own the video. There's no watermarks, There's it's not something, and we learned about native video by getting local news appearances. So we would get asked to go on CBS or on Fox 5 locally to promote our charity barbecue event, and it was a huge opportunity for us because we had never been on news, but we would go on the news and we would start making social media content. We would send out a tweet to the news anchors, tag them, let them know, hey, we're coming up, bringing barbecue, develop a digital relationship with them prior to even getting there. They're so busy being on air that they're just happy they're tagged, so they're retweeting it, you know, and they have a lot of followers, which is great for us. We go up there, we go live on Facebook, so people see the behind the scenes of what it's like to go up and do a new studio. Steven's shaking his head because he's the one that's literally setting up the entire thing while I'm on my phone. But Steven's there putting up the easy up, getting the barbecue ready with Derek Walls, our barbecue pit master. Um, Stover's checking in digitally from Portland. But so we go on the news. You know, that's a live news segment. Let's say it's at 9 a.m. You know, on a Tuesday. We're getting more people watching our repurposed content and our social media content of us going on the news and are actually watching the news channel. And what's even more powerful is that after that news segment, that news segment will go onto the media website of the news channel. So CBS will post a story about Cali Barbecue's 4th of July appearance at the news. That's great. That's a great piece of content. It's a great piece of SEO. What's even more valuable is paying for the licensing. So we paid a company to pay for the native video. So we would pay $35 to get an HD copy, high definition copy of that news appearance, which we would then use for LinkedIn, which we would then use for Instagram, which we now use for TikTok. I'm literally repurposing old news content that I have because it's native video that we own. So it's like, how do we get native video is something that we're always focused on. Stover, you want to riff on that and bring in Ian and our, our writing mm -hmm. transcription process. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I'm glad you mentioned writing, Jensen, because it's it's incredibly important. The the when you open Google, it's the first website most people go to when they open a browser. They're putting in words, almost always, to search. And if you don't have those words on your website or on your social pages or wherever things are being um, surfaced on Google, people can't find you. Yes, now we are being able to search by audio, 
it's in beta in a lot of ways. We will, in a couple of years, it'll be very easy to type in something and then Google will surface results that are audio driven, not just words. But as we know from social media and the reason why you're posting to eight different places after an article, Jensen, is because you need your thoughts and, and your lessons in all the different ways that people can engage with it. Some people can't see, they need to hear only. So that's why we put out a podcast. Some people want to watch something and sit down. That's why we put out a video. Some people don't want to listen or watch to anything that's not fun and they only will read their education. That's where transcripts come into play. It's very difficult to write an article from scratch. You know this, it's expensive. <clears throat> Even if you're only paying 50 bucks, you're still paying 50 bucks for an article. But if, if you turn a video, a one-on-one -on -one conversation, just a short interview between one of your staff and yourself, or a you and a friend, you can turn that into an article by running it through a transcription software, pulling out relevant quotes, and then just putting a few you know, things in between them to, to keep them flowing. And if you don't even want to do that, you can just run the transcript. And then you have those words you're looking for because you've said them verbally, but it only takes as long to actually it only takes as long to, to record as it does to actually say those words. To write all the thoughts in your head could take all day for a non-writer. It could take eight hours to write a 500 word article. And that's madness. It takes me and Ian who are writers by trade um, and journalists, uh, you know, just a few minutes to write that many words if we have the source material. So if I'm asking Ian to write an article, I will always send him a transcript. There's no question. An audio, you'll get the audio, we can listen to it. You can get the transcript. Therefore, the experts in that piece of content that I'm asking them to write about are the ones bringing all the knowledge forward, but they don't have to write. They just have to say it, put it out there. Ian, the professional writer, and myself, a professional editor, will take those words that we've auto-transcribed cheaply and turn it into an article, put you know Sean's name on it or someone else or, or our own, and all of a sudden you have this high quality piece of journalism because experts are giving the information, not us. So Ian doesn't have to know about the ins and outs of restaurants. He just has to learn as he goes, just like any reporter or writer that you have on your staff doesn't need to know everything that you know. They just need to know how to take what you make and put words to it. So the software that we use, the website, and I want people to check this one out. Um, you can check out any number of them. Just search for auto transcription software, but try to find one that has an unlimited plan. Because if you're putting out as much content as we are and, and best served creative is and all that, you know, you're not going to want to be paying for transcript. It's not even worth it at that point. You might as well just do it yourself. But we use a service called Trint, T-R-I-N-T. -T. And they have a, a plan that lets you do, right now they have a plan, they might change, but it lets you do unlimited transcripts. So how it works is when you have a piece of audio or video, you just upload them all. And then it transcribes it, it sends you a notification when it's done, it takes about an hour. And then um, it does a really good job of doing it. You, you should go through and make sure there's nothing really offensive that's auto, you know, they don't want, you don't want your words to come out wrong. You don't want the auto computer to put them wrong. But with a quick um, scan, you can really just see the whole conversation. So you can read an hour long conversation in like 10 minutes, write an article in 20 minutes. You don't even have to listen to the full hour. So it really helped us with content writing and I'll let Ian jump in about our process and how, how it sort of changed when we started using transcriptions. Um, once we did that, because it, it, it just helps you. I mean, it takes so long to listen to something and write about it, but to see it makes it so much easier. Um, Ian, how have, when we started using Trent, how has that helped our process as writer and editor? Oh, I mean, that's helped me oh, tremendously. Um, I think from both a quality of work standpoint and also just the time. Um, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll just be completely candid. This morning, I'm writing the article that we're gonna have go, I'm a little off on our schedule for to go this Thursday or next Thursday. Um, but on Amy Scruggs, who um, is like the definition of like a media re renaissance woman, like professional singer, TV host, author, podcaster, you name it. And, you know, I have a lot of freelance work right now, so which is a blessing, but it can be overwhelming. So I know Sean's style enough. I know what he's going to get to. And also I know Stover's style pretty well in terms of how he's going to manicure the article. So I can... I can listen to the interview on 1.2 speed. So it takes me, you know, I don't know. I'm, I, Andrew's much better at math than me. So I got, you know, it, it, ta it takes me closer to 30 minutes instead of 40 minutes, but I can jump in and out of where I want it. I can, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is I think I've become a better writer 
by working with Trent because I can listen to stuff passively and really be like, all right, what catches, what really catches my, my ear or my eye? Because truth be told, you know, I can find just about anything interesting, but then I can have a story that is clunky and has way too much going on. But if it's like, this is the quote, that's really the home run, or these are the ones. So, I mean, just to be honest with y'all, I listen to Trent. I put on 1.2. I know it's, I know Sean's going to have his lead in to talk about digital hospitality. So I'll start once he gets to the name. I listen to what, she, you know, what the guest has to say. And if I think something's really good, I'll copy and paste it. And from there, you know, I continue to listen on. I continue to jump around. If, say, there was something that was like just super long quote that was really deep and for whatever reason Trent muffled it, you know, muffled the transcription. I can put it at point eight. I do the same thing when I'm pulling quotes off YouTube. So they're, you know, talking like a chopped and screwed song and I can type at the same speed as them. And I basically just lay out all my quotes. I see which ones I like. I see which ones I don't like. I delete them. I put so-and-so says, you know, um, states, you know, whatever. And I just kind of almost actually get an Andrew phone, almost make a math equation out of it. You know what I mean? How is this going to, how is this going to go from A to Z? And it's been a huge help. I mean, I just, I just did a interview today with a, uh, a friend who owns a Jersey store in, in New York for something I'm writing for boardroom. And we had a great talk, but we also talked for an hour and, you know, he's, I was like, Hey, it doesn't matter if your baby's crying in the background. I'm, I'm happy. You're happy being a dad, but it's like, if I send it to Stover and can put it on Trent, I can kind of, you know, jump around. And I mean, it's a great tool. It's not a, it's not an end all be all because you still have to have like the ears or eyes of a writer, if you will. And the transcription service is store. What'd you say? Maybe it's about shoots, maybe about 60 to 70% in terms of like spot on accuracy with, you know, vocabulary, punctuation and stuff, but yeah. it saves a ton of time. You can add in, in a lot of these programs. Now um, the AI is so good that when it starts to hear a certain word, you can add it into the vocabulary and it types it that way. For, for example, Sean, his name is S-H-A-W-N, not S-E-A-N. When I first started putting it in, it started saying Sean, S-E-A-N. I don't want that showing up on YouTube. It's ridiculous to spell the host name wrong in the transcription. So I added his name to the vocabulary. I added my own name because he talks about me. Um, and I added a lot of the company's name. Jensen, you're in there in our dictionary and things. And so I keep adding and building that AI dictionary. So when, when Sean mentions someone, it automatically gets corrected. Of course, it's not foolproof. I mean, these services will tell you they're like 95% accurate. I mean, we know that's bullshit. We don't talk clearly. We muffle, we, we have different dialect and we, we just talk different. So it, it does help to go through and look, but even if you don't, you still have a bunch of words. And, and that's what I wanna get down to people. Like you don't have to edit the shit out of everything. You don't have to put an edited podcast. You don't even have to like write a great feature story like Ian writes for us because we've built this team over time. If you need to start now and become a media company, just record yourself on tape for like 10 minutes, transcribe it, and, and just put that out as an article and see what it does. I mean, people will say, I love that article. I love seeing it, especially if you post on social media. They're going to say, great job. And you're going to think, oh, I only spent 10 minutes. But it's not about the time you spend. It's about the, the lessons and the information you're putting out there for people. So the, the real magic is, is in this process and all these different flows that the content grows through. So you have one piece of content, right? An interview or a recording, you put it in a trend, you get an article out of it, great. But then when Sean sees that article and Ian sends it to us, he has 10 different social posts. All he has to do is copy and paste one paragraph of that article because it's written well, it's a story. So Sean doesn't have to sit down and try and think of what he's gonna write on social. He just takes one or two paragraphs that Ian wrote, takes an image from the article and puts it up there. So by having a process where one thing goes to another place and goes to another and you think, what do I need? I need audio, video, words, and images. By having that process, you can do so much down the line if you think about it. Because what happens when Sean posts? He might improvise and add some more words. That gives me inspiration to write another article based on his words. I send it to Ian, he, he puts it out and sends it to Sean and we get this whole circle of content going. But at the end of the day, Sean, who's the business owner and owner of Calibibica Media, doesn't have to write these. He's, he's busy. This is why we're on the team. He doesn't have to write these articles. He has to share his thoughts and get them recorded. 
record everything you do, document it all. If it's online, if you have a team meeting, record it, archive it, because then you can transcribe it and search it later. Think of how important that is for your team. So the, the fact that you have words and those words are searchable is very crucial. And I will, at, at the end, I mean, I will always tell people to do this. Yes, post to show social, but care about the words too, because you're leaving out that. This is great to hear reinforcing. Mackenzie on our team already scouted a whole bunch of uh, transcription apps and Trent was the one that she said, we need to go with this. So this is good. Now, here you go team. We're going we're to start. We're going to start. Yeah, no, I'm calling it here. We're going to have to do a show interviewing the Trent guy. One of, one of our shows will do it, then we'll repurpose it. And then we'll just get like oh. the free service, right? And this is totally <laughs> random and off the, I was like, there's something, I really like Stover's voice and cadence. And I just realized you speak like Simon Sinek. Look, look into that. <laughs> Your cadence sounds like Simon Sinek, somebody that we, we, uh, we definitely look up to. I was like, oh, something about you. your delivery. That's I figured it out at the end there. The uh, former podcast host myself of the Best Barbecue Show. <laughs> <laughs> makes makes complete sense there. So uh, I know we're kind of on the hour, and I want to be uh, respectful of, of everybody's time. And, and these conversations can and should and will go on and on and on between these teams, which is which is really amazing. And I love the record everything. We have that capture over create mindset is something that we instill in our team and everybody that we speak to. You know, it was, it was strange at first for uh, even clients or just even when somebody was like, hey, I see what you're doing. Can we catch up? I was like, cool, let's do a, a, a video chat. And, and then I was like, you're okay if I record this, right? They're like, what are you recording this for? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I never know what I'm recording anything for. But one of the things that happens a lot uh, is... I'll interact with somebody because my job is to bring people into our orbit and they'll have something meaningful or a project and, and we'll rap about it. And we're like, yes, this, we're doing this. We're working on this together. And then I would go to the team and be like, Hey, we're going to do this and we're going to work on it this way. And I'm a really good hype man yet. I, I could never do justice to the vision or mission or work that they specifically have that we are going to try and then capture and so we started recording them and or, you know, multiple members of the team will actually be on those kind of brainstorm sessions because they get it directly from them. And this team is built on their own personal inspirations around what we do and, and how we communicate. So I think it's another important thing. I can just tell from listening to, to the Cali Barbecue Media team where there's certain lanes, certain types of content, certain types of communication, certain types of interaction that really truly inspire us just a little bit more than the other stuff. And if, if we can allow the space for those type of things to happen, a la, we have seven writers on our team now. And Sophie was like, cool, your videos are great, Jensen, but I'm a writer and I really want to be able to have more written word. And so I said, well, let's do this 86, 86, 86 challenge. And of course she goes, that's not possible. And then I said, yes, it is. We're going to make it happen. And we make it happen. And so now we are knee deep in the written word because Sophie wanted it to be. And my job is just to create the space for good ideas, good people, innovation, and the future of this industry to happen. It's not my job to make it all happen. I just am trying to create the space. So, and I think that's something that, that Sean and the Cali barbecue media team do a, a really great job. Uh, Sean, anything you want to leave us just, with? Uh, just uh, real quick, I have, a, awesome. I, have a qu I have a question from Troy Hooper um, down in the audience, the clubhouse audience. Thank you, everybody that's down there, Monty, William, David, Aaron. Um, we're grateful that you guys are here, and obviously anybody that's listening to this podcast, we highly encourage you get on clubhouse because it is a way. We say stay curious, get involved, and ask for help, and clubhouse is just an amazing way to you're curious because you're in a clubhouse room. You're curious because you're listening to a podcast. You're curious because you're consuming content. Clubhouse allows you to raise your hand and ask a question, um, which we truly believe in. But he asked, what's your hashtag strategy when you are posting on? So first of all, I'm going to compliment you. Reddit, I'm going to look into. Stover and I have talked about Reddit, but we haven't really hacked the Reddit code. So I'm going to talk to you offline about what, what you're doing on Reddit because that's very interesting to me and we don't discriminate on any platform. It doesn't matter to us what the logo is on the outside. Ultimately, it's where is the attention. So for us, we're, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of stuff on Nextdoor because I think that's very interesting for hyper, hyper local content for our restaurant. But I will talk to you about Reddit. But Troy's question specifically is hashtag strategy when you're taking that pillar piece of content and you're posting it on each of those Facebook groups, Instagram, LinkedIn. What's, what is your strategy? And I'll quickly 
tell you what, what mine is, which isn't that we don't, I don't have a strategy. I'm just literally going off the cuff of, of posting on social. Well, and No, whatever. yeah, I mean, we have to, Sean, you have a strategy. Let's What's just, my let's strategy? You tell, you, tell me my, you tell me what my strategy it's, is. <laughs> we all know that the different platforms have different tones. It's just inherent to it. I mean, you go on Facebook, it feels different than LinkedIn. Sure, you could post the same piece of content everywhere, but give it a little bit of um, unique perspective to that audience. Talk to that audience. Say, hey, LinkedIn, what are your thoughts on this? And then use a, a, a portion of, of your article that has to do with maybe business or hiring. Then go on Facebook and say, hey, Facebook audience, what do you think about this? And then make it a little more consumer focused, a little more customer focused. So Sean changes a little bit how he communicates with the audience is because they know he knows they want different things. And a lot of the people follow him and us on multiple channels. So giving some specific um, context, uh, uh, contextual creative, they call it, to the platform that you're posting on is a strategy that we do use. Yeah, I think that's the solid foundation of it, just understanding the nuance of the communication in each of those platforms is kind of first. And then we try and approach it from kind of curious we would call it discovery on our end or the the uh the time when we're trying to like understand what we don't understand which is everything and so we are childlike in our enthusiasm and our our desire to know everything about everything and so you know Corey has has a has a document where we are are actively researching and understanding hashtags and what are the hashtags within any pillar styles of content, any series of shows that we do, any topic that we're focused on. And we're even like teaching ourselves as teams. Like I have really great intuition for like seeing the thing behind the thing. That's the real thing. I'm always looking for the actual thing, not the facade, because I spent so much of my career building up the facade of food, beverage, and hospitality, put a smile on it. It's part of your uniform, leave your shit at the door. And now it's like, we got to do something different. So we take a discovery approach of, of having that childlike enthusiasm to learning about everything, hashtags included. And so we're usually in the, in the kind of very practically 10 hashtags, 12 hashtags or certain hashtags for a certain styles of content that we like that historically play pretty well. Then there's always the very micro nuance of, of that in and of itself. You can look at that sheet and say, what are some of the things that are trending? I know the last time essentially Corey looked at that sheet and, and how relevant those, those hashtags are based on the last time that that sheet was updated. So there is some practicality around that. I'm not letting that slow me down to the point of speed is really important in our process. And so I'm just kind of getting a sense of the world through the lens of hashtags and using that 10, 12 hashtags. And then you know, allowing to, to put in the word restaurant and see what all is popping up. What now are people uh, trending? What are they talking about that is specific to ours? One of the strategies you want to make sure and not deploy is just to try and siphon attention from trending topics or from hashtags. You see that where it has no relevance whatsoever, and you're always going to get caught on that. So don't be using hashtags or or trying to use elements of content that don't speak to what you're actually doing, you know, so don't try to hack to that degree. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Focus on the words, the story for sure. Uh, 10, 12 that are relevant to the platform that are, that are historically play well within the context of what the, the uh, creative that we're putting out is on the platform that we're putting it out. Yeah. I just wanted to add for us, the most important thing is quantity. It's quantity over quality because through the quantity, we will produce quality work. So it's be so good they can't ignore you. And the only way to do that is by putting out a quantity. So I'm not gonna let posting a hashtag slow me up from publishing. So we talk about you have to plan, you have to produce, you have to publish, and then you have to promote. The problem, that's, that, that makes you a media company. Once you stop with those four Ps, then you haven't completed the cycle. So if one of those things stop much, then you're not actually going to produce. You're not going to make the content. You're not going to record it. And then that's going to prevent you. Well, I don't like how I sound. I don't like how I look. That's going to prevent you from actually publishing the content. And then once you publish it, then it's the hashtags and who am I tagging and who am I sharing this content with? That's actually the promotion. Like that is the complete cycle. And back to what you said, speed, everything has to do with speed on the internet. So it's more important for us. 
if there's something that's trending locally with our local Padres team to make a cocktail relevant to that Padres team, making social content about that cocktail and then putting that on, online, that's more important than producing a, um, a, a big list of, of hashtags. Yeah, thanks for that question, Troy. All right, let's let's put a pin in this. Uh, we need to schedule another one of these. This is this is really good. We can we kind of set the tone and the, and the table for kind of what we do. I think it'd be really great to even do like micro versions. Like we we have different lengths of meetings because sometimes if you're in a forty five minute meeting with me, the team calls it melting your face off because it's just too in, fucking inspired for forty five minutes straight. It's exhausting. Uh, I think the Cali Barbecue team probably knows that same feeling from Sean. We're just like intensely visionary. So we need some micro little pieces, like very specifically that we could literally have a 25 minute conversation about hashtags. I think that would be super cool for us as we're looking to kind of grow this and collaborate more and integrate more styles of content communication. And yeah, just even the team, just what are we talking about this week? I think is, is relevant content because everybody's just trying to figure out what the hell to do. Us included, even though we may be good at it, we're still we have no idea what the hell we're doing yet. We'll continue to do it and we'll continue to find ways to, to bring people into our orbit and succeed at that. So I uh, want to uh, thank everybody who's listening, watching any of this content. Uh, this is absolute fire and honor to, to share the stage with, with all of you. Uh, look out again, Besser Podcast, if you're here on Clubhouse, we'll have this up on Friday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And I know it'll be up on Digital Hospitality as well. You'll see us cross-pollinating, cross-promoting the hell out of this thing because that's kind of what we do at three in the morning. Sean and I are messaging each other going, what are we going to talk about today? So uh, yeah, Sean, anything else? Uh, take us out. Otherwise, we can wrap this. Great week. Sure. Yeah, no, the, we always just say stay curious, get involved, and ask for help. Um, we're trying to be more regular on Clubhouse. So every Friday at 10 a.m., Digital Hospitality, um, whether it's a previous guest that we had on the show or whether it's um, how to become a media company, uh, we want to have people come and ask questions. You know, Stay curious, get involved, and ask for help. There's never been an easier time. I know if you reach out to Jensen, he is, there's a quote that I'm using all the time, and it's from Ryan Reynolds. He was uh, you know, obviously the famous actor but more more impressive is the content creation that he does for his marketing company which he has since sold but uh, Jason Pfeiffer the editor of entrepreneur magazine interviewed him to when he was on the cover of the magazine and he told him I'm weirdly available and I am weirdly available and so is Jensen so doesn't matter what platform you reach out don't be don't be shocked when we get back in touch with you to answer your question yeah tag us on something if you go today and make your first ever TikTok video or reels or you're on YouTube shorts uh, anywhere, please, please tag us. We will interact with you because we're out here to try and change those habits and build up those good habits in our industry and stop selling food, start telling stories. All right, let's wrap this. End broadcast, end room. Amazing. I so appreciate being a part of this. Thanks for uh, thanks for hosting the show.